Automotive design is extremely subjective and it can garner as much hate as adulation. Some functional designs have gone on to become icons, while some design marvels were devoid of any form of practicality. Some gain acceptance with time, while some go on to even change definitions. It's true then, design always comes a full circle. Well, does something like this work? You take the butch looks of a massive SUV and then you give it a coupe line. Well, BMW certainly thought that it would work, that's why they came up with the X6. Now, did that work? Well, the design purists actively expressed their disapproval, but some people, like myself, thought that it might just work, and it did manage to create a huge niche for itself. Well, now, Mercedes-Benz has decided that it too wants a share of this pie, which is why they've come up with this, the GLE Coupe. The GLE Coupe is a Mercedes product without a predecessor. The most obvious element in the design, as the name suggests, is an unconventional coupe line, well, now conventional thanks to the X6. It is a form or a function characteristic, as I shall explain later. The coupe is longer and wider than the GLE, which translates into more bulk on the outside and more space on the inside. That means a sportier footprint. The cabin is quite similar in layout to the standard GLE, with a few AMG touches and badges. The Coupe 2 gets a revised dashboard with a new display and a C-Class-like command controller. The seats are wide and plush but with good support. A nice middle ground then between the sporty but firm AMG seats and the soft and cushy standard SUV seats. There's a good amount of knee room and shoulder room and yes, I know what you're thinking next, I'm getting to it. Now sure, a Coupe line looks spectacular and all but there's a very good reason why it's never belonged on cars with four seats. And that's the rear headroom, or the lack thereof. But I don't really foresee anyone buying this car to be in the back seat. If you want to buy this car for the back seat comfort, you buy the GLE. People who buy the GLE Coupe will want to get into the front seat and actually drive. Well, it's no surprise that Mercedes-Benz have got the GLE Coupe down to India. We always knew that they would. But it's the version of the GLE Coupe that they've brought down. That's the part that's caught us off guard. So the version of the GLE that has come to India is not the 63 AMG that we thought it would be, but it's actually the GLE 450, which means it's not got the V8 engine that we were expecting in this car. Instead, what it has is a 3-liter bi-turbo V6. Now, with the GLE 450, it is the first time that Mercedes-AMG has introduced an engine that sits in between their portfolio of engines. So, the 3-liter V6 bi-turbo sits in between the massive bi-turbo V8s on one hand and the turbo inline fours on the other. We have experienced this motor before in the E400 convertible, but that was in a lower state of tune. The E felt calmer and more refined, while the GLE motor is just a whole lot more exciting overall. And we all love those massive AMG V8s, even the new age turbocharged ones, but this time around the V6 turbos, well, I think they kind of make more sense in a country like India. Because it's not really intimidating power as those massive V8s have. But I think for an SUV of this type and size, which weighs about 2.3 tons, by the way, I think this V6 is just right. I mean, it's not slow. I mean, in no possible place on the planet Earth is a 0 to 100 time in 5.0 seconds considered slow. But having said that, this V6 just feels so much more usable and much less intimidating. Now, this is an SUV at the end of the day, so it's supposed to keep its occupants in comfort, even though sitting in the back seat. So, what this time around Mercedes and AMG have done is they've given the 7G uh, Tronic, the DSG, a miss, and instead you have a 9G Tronic transmission. Now, it's not as quick as a dual clutch, but it's still more towards the comfort. The nine gears actually are just so seamless that you don't realize when the, the system is automatically shifting. But don't get me wrong, when you do put it in that Sports Plus mode, it livens things up. 
and it is adequately quick. The 9G Tronic is also inclined towards efficiency as the shorter ratios reduce the intervals between gear shifts and hence keep the engine speed reduced at most times. It also has the ability to skip gears both when upshifting and downshifting, which means more comfort, more efficiency, and more silence until, of course, you instigate its feral side. Now the V6, it does sound really, really nice. It's not as special as the V8s. It can never be. AMG V8s always sound special. And that's one department that AMG can't really go wrong in, but these V6s sound really nice. The crackles and the pops, well, they're different this time around. More in number, less in size. But every single time that you get your foot off the gas, and they won't disappoint you. In terms of safety, there's nothing that you wouldn't expect in an AMG. Six airbags and a host of predictive and preventive measures, thanks to cameras, sensors, and electronics. Its headlamps too have a safety function, albeit for oncoming traffic, as it adjusts the beam so as not to blind the oncoming traffic. In terms of the different driving modes in this car, you have the usual Comfort Sport, Sports Plus. There is also another mode for snow, which I don't think anyone in India is going to use unless you are going to make those winter trips up high in the mountains. But apart from that, there is the individual setting button. But the Sports Plus is where I'm sure you want to see what it's like. Yes, just like the V8s, it does liven things up. The suspension does stiffen up. It does get a whole lot more louder in this cabin. And your smile is going to get a whole lot wider as well. Now, the other cool effect I like about this car is when you shift about these driving modes from comfort to sport and then sports plus, the screen changes and it actually shows you all the forces acting on the car at a given time. And it's quite a cool effect. And when you put it in sports plus, you can immediately see that little red dot in the center bobbing about a bit, which actually signifies your active center of gravity. But inside the cabin, you can feel the forces far lesser and that's because of this brilliant suspension system. With 275 section tires up front and gigantic 325 section rears, the GLE 450 AMG Coupe has a huge amount of traction. With so much grip and the 4MATIC all-wheel drive system, traction control is almost never forced to cut in because the power, even when you floor it, is never wasteful. Which is why you'd have to be a complete tool to lose control of the GLE 450 AMG. And despite the 21-inch tires, the ride quality is surprisingly comfortable even for an AMG. That's mostly down to the tuning of the Airmatic suspension setup and the adaptive damping, but also thanks to a higher profile on the tires like those on the earlier AMG SUVs. But the one area where the laws of physics step in and say, OK, enough horsing around, is the brakes. The 2.3-ton weight does make stopping the GLE 450 far more challenging than accelerating it, and with time, you will acquaint yourself with the realities of brake fail. But that's not the GLE Coupe's only problem. Now the other inherent problem with having that Coupe line in the back, and this is the one that's a little more difficult to live with, and that's principally because it has a debilitating effect on the driver, and that's the rear visibility through that small mirror. There's practically none of it. You have to rely on your side view mirrors, and considering this is a huge SUV with a large footprint, when you're driving around in urban areas, that's going to be a big, big problem. But thankfully, this has a wonderful 360 degrees camera-based parking system, which will show you everything that you can't see, especially when you're parking. So then from a standpoint of mad AMGs that we are all so used to now, the GLE 63 would have probably made a little bit more sense to us. We have our natural biases towards the V8s, but then in terms of buying potential and in terms of actually owning this car, I think the V6s make more sense for a country like India. Especially more so when you consider the price at which the GLE 450 drives in at. Now, here's a little perspective. The ML63 AMG costs a whopping 1.5 crores, while the GLE Coupe's closest competitor currently, the top-of-the-line X6, which has a diesel by the way, costs over a crore. 
Now remember the XXM will only compete with the GLE 63 AMG when it comes down. And so whether you like the coupe line or not, at 86.4 lakhs X showroom, the GLE 450 coupe is one hell of a bargain for what it offers.